hello dear friends uh, let us continue our uh, discussion upon the ejb so next uh, topic what we are going to discuss here is container services so inside the container services uh, we are having many uh, subtopics that is dependency injection concurrency instance pooling caching uh, transactions security timers naming and object stores interoperability lifecycle callbacks interceptors java enterprise platform integration so all these uh, components come under the container services now we are go we are going to look into each one of them one by one so first uh, let us discuss something about what is called as uh, dependency injection so in the dependency injection is nothing but whenever we are trying to make use of the ejb then we see that uh, there are many components working together and they have to be some uh, rules and regulations for uh, operating together so when we are making use of many components together they must be combined in such a way that they are not violating the rules and regulations of that particular uh, containers uh, or application so uh, dependency injection is nothing but we are just trying to couple those discrete units together uh, by making use of some independence rules and separation concerns so uh, these things are called uh, normally as plumping so when we are making use of this dependency injection then let us see how it is being implemented inside our uh, uh, container so let us make use of this prototype uh, which is nothing but a user module and inside this we are making use of an instance member uh, instance member is your mail module and i am creating one object called as mail here so this mail is nothing but the dependent module for this particular application so whenever i am making use of the mail then it is nothing but we are saying that it is a dependent module by making use of this annotation so inside this we are making use of one function and we are using the ob object called as mail and to send the mail to a particular person then by making use of these type of things we are injecting the dependency called mail modules object inside the container so the fictitious or uh, dependent module annotation serves two purposes in this particular example so it defines a dependency upon some service of type mail module so mail module is the um, of uh, this one class here and the object of that mail module is mail then we are making use of the user module may not deploy until this dependency is satisfied so in the annotation called as depend at the rate of dependent module uh, there are some rules and regulations written for uh, dependency injection so for that if it is not satisfying those rules then automatically this cannot be used as the uh, this uh, this cannot be used as the resource or component inside our ejb container so it also marks the instance member mail as a candidate for injection and the container will populate this field during deployment so during the deployment uh, my compiler will understand that this mail object is one dependent variable so the next one is concurrency so whenever we are trying to make use of the ejb components and uh, many components are working together um, so there will be a problem and that is being handled by making use of uh, dependency injection we have seen uh, similarly when there are many client requests being made to the ejp container simultaneously then always there is a chance of having a deadlock or we can say live logs and the race conditions so these are uh, most commonly observed whenever we are trying to work with any of the uh, enterprise architecture type of applications so and these are nothing but the nightmares of any programmer so in this uh, when we are talking then uh, ejb allows the application developer to sidestep the problem and entirely thanks to a series of concurrency policies so the ejb what it does is it is having a lot many policies built in within itself to handle the concurrency problems of dead logs live logs and race conditions so the developer may need not to worry about how exactly this concurrency will be handled whenever he is writing the code for his application the next topic what we are going to study is uh, instance pooling or caching so what is this instance pooling right now 
So um, let us take an example of a printer being uh, connected inside a network inside our LAN and then what exactly happens is let us think that this service is nothing but a printer and there are these are nothing but the clients making a request for the printing of any document then what exactly happens is when they are doing it simultaneously then the request is being made from one client second client third client and all these things have to be maintained inside one queue so the printer makes use of a queue and each one of the service will be or printing operation will be done by each one of the uh, request by a client so it will be served after it completes the request then there is a option for the next client so here it maintains a separate queue for that so here there is some locking uh, mechanism present inside the service so what exactly happens is it is doing only one job at a time uh, but sometimes what happens is we may and this is completely synchronized here and sometimes if there is no synchronization inside our uh, component sharing then this may happen with the case so there are many clients and they are trying to have the service all at once concurrently so in those situations sometimes there may be a possibility of deadlock or whatever it is so in these situations uh, our EJB comes very handy so this is with respect to non ejb applications so when we are coming with the ejb applications then let us assume that this is one queue and this is one queue and also this is also one queue and this is our ejb container which is containing the instance pool and for each one of the queue it is maintaining one object instance or instance for this and this one for this so what exactly happens here is uh, depending upon the number of users or number of clients or number of queues present for that request to be done by the EJB, the EJB container creates so many number of instances depending upon the number of requests. So here it is nothing but instance pooling or caching what we call in terms of EJB. So next thing is transactions. So when we are working with the transactions then we see that these four properties so that is atomicity consistency isolation and durability all these properties have to be met and uh, we already know about this atomicity or uh, consistency uh, isolation and durability terms but let us uh, have one more glance about it so whenever we are talking about the atomicity then if uh, every instruction in a call completes or none do uh, something like uh, when we are working with the jdbc so transactions then we see that we have a method called as uh, call uh, so we have a method called as rollback and whenever uh, a transaction is not getting completed we completely roll back to the point where we have left it out so we just set the current point for the operation then if it is not completed then we roll back to the point wherever we have left out so that is nothing but atomicity Similarly, we have consistency uh, which governs the rules of the database management system and the other uh, component rules whatever we are imparting in that particular application. So next we have is uh, isolation. So whenever we are talking about the isolation then the transactions in progress are not visible to the other people outside the scope. So it is nothing but isolation. Then the durability once a transaction successfully completes then uh, it has to commit to its changes that is the data whatever we made the changes it has to be committed to the database so this is uh, already main being maintained by our uh, EJB container so there is a separate uh, API called a GTA that is Java transaction API and that is specially meant for working with the transactions and it does all the things related with the transactions so next we have the security so security is nothing but giving the access to a particular user so here we can see there is one admin and there is one user and there are some requests present inside the EJB container and here we have one security component so admin is allowed to that's being used inside the container whereas the user uh, he's been denied requests because of the security reasons provided by the security module and he's not been given the access to the EJB container so the security is also being handled by EJB so next we have the timer services so this timer services so um, most of the times works with a session type of uh, variables 
or like uh, banking transactions or any transactions where uh, we need to be logged in and uh, need some time on all these things so then we may make use of the timer service so ejb can also make use of these events to trigger the time uh, depending upon the time then next we have the something called as naming and object stores and for this java is making use of uh, something called a jndi uh, that is java naming and directory interface so for that it is making use of something called as object binding and lookup api and object binding is nothing but the association of a distributed object with the natural language name or identifier so it is nothing but whenever we are making use of the objects uh, present inside our uh, java the naming conventions we normally create them uh, what functionality that particular object is doing so something like that uh, the naming convention we have to follow it then the lookup api the lookup api finds the object where exactly it is being located inside the distributed services and uh, whenever a request is being made to that particular service to be given then uh, the lookup api will find that remote object and gives the uh, option for searching it so java as i have already told you it maintains uh, java naming and directory interface to work with this type of things the next uh, uh, the link whatever i have provided here it gives the uh, documentation of the jndi api so likewise there are many other uh, egp vendors but all of them have to maintain the common object request to broker architecture protocol to work with any of the things so next we have the interoperability and the interoperability is nothing but when we are working with the many types of operations then uh, they have to operate with them uh, efficiently so for that we have uh, java rmi iiop it stands for remote method invocation internet inter object protocol then uh, for remote method invocation and provides for transaction and naming security interoperability and ejb also requires uh, uh, JAX web services with JAX WS, JAX RPC that is uh, JAX uh, remote procedure calls for uh, web services for Java Enterprise Edition and web services metadata for the Java platform specifications. So likewise we have something called as lifecycle callbacks it is happening in our uh, EJB whenever there is an event to be triggered by using the callback interfaces. So for that what we do is we make use of a uh, function uh, that is annotation uh, by making the stop life uh, cycle callback and stop life cycle callback in between them we just make use of the function uh, whatever is being required for the service then next we have the interceptors so interceptor uh, is a handling of many container services the specification cannot possibly identify all cross-cutting concerns facing our project so there may be some interceptions so how to handle them we just make use of the uh, start time then end time for this and whatever invocation has to be done be written inside the start time and the end time so here we are applying that uh, methods uh, like apply interceptor matrix interceptor dot class then function is my login method then apply interceptor uh, matrix interceptor dot class and function my logout method so this is how it looks whenever we are trying to make use of this matrix interceptor function call or create the object of this and after creating the object whenever it is being used then the things happen something like this inside the background so the next topic what we have is platform integration where we use uh, enterprise edition and aggregates many of the other uh, APIs like transaction service, persistence API, GNDI, security services, and web services. So we are trying to integrate all this, and the documentation is provided in the link here. Then we are just uh, winding up with uh, bringing it together. So we have uh, had enough theory up to this point, and we have introduced the topics only conceptually. So in the next uh, coming chapters, We'll take off the gloves and it's the pseudo code for the real deal. That is, we are just trying to dig in into the actual coding of our EJP programming. So this is it. Thank you. We'll see in the next lecture.